Hey guys, hi, how are you? This is our 2024 Genesis GV70. It's a vehicle that we've had for the last 1,000 miles and maybe a couple of weeks. In this video, I'll give you a quick intro to some of the features of this vehicle as well as our first impressions after 1,000 miles. Throughout this video, you're gonna see me making references to other vehicles in the segment to paint you a better picture of why we opted to buy our first Korean car. We test drove the 2024 Lexus RX350 Hybrid right before checking out the GV70. We used to have a 2018 RX350 that turned out to be a great experience and I have that video in this channel. You can check it out right here. But the new RX250H felt like an almost totally different vehicle thanks to its buzzy four-cylinder normally aspirated engine made it to a CVT. Gone was the smoothness of the old V6 with the 8-speed transmission. We were still gonna get it just because we liked everything else about that car, but in the back of my head, I disliked the constant drone of the RX250H. I know that the RX250 doesn't necessarily compete directly with this GV70, and we also consider other vehicles like the Honda CRV and the Mazda CX50. Okay, let's put it in sport mode. I usually drive it on echo. Let's put it in sport mode, brake torque it. See how it does. That's 60. I don't know. I don't have a way to measure it. So I don't have an official time. It's rated at 5.9. It felt pretty good. You notice how sport mode holds the revs pretty high up. You wanna try it one more time? Sure, why not? Okay, come to a stop. Brake torque it. Let's go. Revs all the way to 6,500. Maybe, maybe 5.9. Not sure. I wish I had a device to be able to time it, but I don't. Okay, we're done having fun. Let's get to the boring part. During this driving session, I just want to touch on some points that I may cover in detail later in the video. For example, things like the ride quality. The ride quality is very good. It's very quiet, very composed. Yes, it is an SUV, but one thing that I like about this car in particular, this SUV in particular, is that it doesn't drive like a car. Um, when I drove the RX 350H, just the day prior I bought this one, I noticed that that SUV drove like a car because it's, it is based on a car. So yes, this is this is based on the G70, actually the same platform as the G70, which is a sedan. But when you drive it, it drives more as an SUV. It's got a higher sitting position and maybe that's why the headroom is affected. So this is uh, between the X3 and the GLC 300. This is the one that has the least headroom because like right now the seat is all the way down, but I still feel like I'm sitting in a high sitting position. So there's no way to bring it down closer to the ground, but I don't really mind it because this gives me a commanding view of the road, which I really like. We usually drive it on Echo. Uh, basically Comfort and, and Echo are very similar, but I think what the Echo does, it enables the vehicle to have the start-stop feature. So when you stop, when you come to a stop, it will kill the engine to save on gas. And it does make a difference because my wife thought that she should put it on, on, uh, on Comfort thinking that she was gonna get the comfortable features of this car but in reality it, it just disables that feature and I like it because it does it really well it's almost seamless um, I noticed that other cars when they have like a mild hybrid they do uh, close that gap between the vehicle being dead and coming and the engine kicking in but this one does it really well um, it has a, a, a feature called auto hold and I like it because when you come let's say to a red light it, it enables you to get your foot off the brake pedal and the, and the vehicle won't creep up. You already have the engine shut off when you came to a stop, but when you put this auto hold, it will basically grab on to the brakes and it won't allow the vehicle to roll up or back. But when you press on the gas pedal, then you have an extra delay. And that's why I don't like to enable it too much. It's good to have it, but I feel that it's a little bit too intrusive. Now let's talk about the differences between the 3.5 and the 2.5. The 3.5 comes at a premium of about six to eight thousand dollars, just about. And I don't feel that you get enough features to justify the cost. As it is, this is a fully loaded version of the 2.5, and I'm still about seven seven thousand dollars from the 3.5. And the features that it offers are not enough to justify the premium. For example, it's going to give you more horsepower. So instead of 300 horsepower, you're going to get 375. 
but do I need the extra 75 ponies? I don't think so. Yes, it will do 0 to 60 a lot faster, maybe closer to the 5 range. I think it's 4.9 or 5.0, 0 to 60. But this one is already sub 6 seconds, 0 to 62. So to me, that is enough. And I get to save a little bit at the gas pump. Another thing I like about this car is that it doesn't require you to put premium gas in it. So compared to my Acura, for example, my Acura is, is able to give me about maybe 28 to 29 miles to the gallon on the freeway. Uh, but this one gives me 26 or even a little bit more but on this one i get to put just regular gas and save a little bit let's talk about the value proposition of the gv70 i don't think the 3.5 has any value proposition over the competition because it is very expensive now this one being the 2.5 still because i maxed it out i get to i paid over fifty-five thousand dollars for it so compared to an x3 or a glc 300 it's uh maybe a little bit less but around the ballpark what I think is the best package to opt for is the advanced package because it gives you most of the features that this vehicle has and you get to save about $6,000 and then you get the fully um, leather sitting surfaces on the seats if you care for that. You only don't get a couple of things that if you don't really care for, you get to save a lot of money. Now, if you go for the very basic GV70, that's when you're saving versus the, G, uh, the X3 or the GLC 300. And I think we came to a mutual agreement between me and my wife with getting this GV70 because as much as it is a comfortable ride for the freeway for those long trips that we usually embark on, at the same time, it's a little sporty, so I get to have a little fun with those 300 horsepower and the uh, eight-speed transmission that is very quick, very precise. So I like it because my wife gets to drive it for what it is, just a, a people mover, but then when I wanna have a little fun, I can do that too. Let me show you under the hood. It's a 2.5 four-cylinder turbo that is good for 300 horsepower and 311 pound-feet of torque. Every GV70 has a rear base all-wheel drive system regardless of trim level. The base model is rated a little bit higher when it comes to MPG, but this one being the Sport Prestige, and because of the bigger wheels, it's only rated at 19 in the city and 26 on the highway for a 22 miles per gallon combined, which is lower than the X3 and the GLC, but this one doesn't require you to put premium gas in it. The weight of this vehicle is slightly under 4,200 pounds. It's 185.6 inches long and 113.2 inches wide. These dimensions are eerily similar to both the X3 and the GLC 300. Both German rivals have a mild hybrid powertrain unlike the GV70 that is just a four cylinder turbo. I think the Genesis did a great job with the noise insulation, therefore you hardly hear the engine get real. I think four cylinder engines don't sound good. They're coarse in nature. So what you hear in the cabin is artificial engine noise that you can disable if you wish. I think the eight speed transmission is very good and it does a good job of putting you in the right gear for what you needed at the moment. And one thing that I forgot to mention when I was going over the specifications of the vehicle is that the ground clearance is uh, 7.3 while the X3 has full 8 inches of ground clearance. I couldn't find information on the Mercedes, so I owe you that one. The interior dimensions are very similar to those of the X3 and the GLC 300, but it's slightly roomier, almost in every category except for front headroom. But the differences are so minute that it comes down to taste in choosing one vehicle over another. None of these vehicles offer you a particularly roomy second row because of the very nature of the chassis. You have a hump through the middle of the floorboard to accommodate things like the drive shaft. Therefore, even though it has five seat belts, the passenger in the middle won't be that comfortable. But this, any front wheel drive SUV of similar exterior dimensions will do a better job of making the rear passengers more comfortable. This wasn't a barrier to us because we hardly ever have any passengers with us. But when we do, they will have their own AC controls and manual window shapes. The interior lines are soft and they flow gracefully. You will find oval and circle shaped motifs throughout that I find very relaxing. And I can see this design aging very well down the road. We opted for the red interior and in my opinion, it is the right shade of red, making it look both classy and sporty. The center console has a full plate with two knobs that I often confuse with one another. You have a main knob and then you have extra controls. So I think it takes time to learn. The center screen is touchable, but it is far from the reach of the driver. I really like the layout of the full digital instrument panel and the sleek center screen in an era where it seems like car manufacturers are competing to put the biggest screens in their cars. I believe that in this case, bigger isn't necessarily better. The interior materials are of great quality and everything feels well built to the touch. Each and every knob, switch and surface is pleasant to the eye, more so at night with the help of the ambient lighting. 
It could be a little softer on the areas where your elbows rest while driving, especially if you're used to other premium brands' interiors. The seats are on the firmer side, but the position is highly configurable. It didn't take me long to find the perfect setup. Please note that the Sport Prestige package will have leather seats, but they have a fabric insert that holds you in place. I just don't know how this fabric is gonna hold up in time. The driver's seat has a massage feature that I love on longer drives. My vehicle also comes equipped with laminated glass on the front windows for sound insulation. If you don't like the fabric inserts, you can opt for the advanced package. That's gonna give you the full leather seats. But the Sport Prestige package is the only bundle that gives you four seats. Also, the Sport Prestige package is also the only bundle that allows you to ditch the controversial stock steering wheel. Instead, you will get this three spoke that is heated. The Lexicon sound system does the job, it sounds really good, but I found other systems like the one found in the Lexus, which is called the Mark Levinson, even the BMW's Harman Kardon, and even the Tesla stock sound system better than this one. In my opinion, it's missing speakers on the A-pillars or high up and closer to the occupant's ears. I don't think the navigation system is that good, especially if you're used to Google Maps and the system from Apple. I find it confusing and missing handy information that I'm accustomed from all the years of using Google Maps. The GV70 comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but disappointingly, it isn't wireless. But it has a charging pad for one phone. The steer, just for yourself, looks are subjective, but I find it unique and very attractive. But I would say the word unique is the one that comes to mind when I look at this vehicle. I do find the rear bumper cladding a little excessive, but that is why I went with black, because it hides the cladding and the fake mints. I love the black chrome and the Sport Prestige, so I would say that this package will be very similar to the M Sport package from BMW or Mercedes AMG line. But on the Mercedes, you have to opt for the night package to black out all the chrome. The 21 inch wheels on my Sport Prestige GV70 are the only option, unlike BMW and or Mercedes, that you have to opt for larger wheels as both of them come with 19 inch wheels for the sporty packages. And I think that black rims in general are overplayed, so I find this rather gunmetal color a better way to dress up this vehicle. I really like the split module headlights on the GV70. They're full LED in all trim levels. I like on the RX250 that you must opt for the top of the line trim levels to access full LED lighting. But in all fairness, I should mention that the GV70 gives and takes when it comes to lighting. As yes, they are full LED in all trim levels, but they're not adaptive on any of their trim levels. The grille is very handsome in my opinion. This Genesis design language lasts very well in the proportions of the GV70 because of this SUV's square front end. So the grille is prominent giving this SUV air supply. And then we have this aggressive design below the grille with functional vents and no fog lights. I like the side profile. The front end is blocky, but the rear end is near coupe like But it hides it very well with the help with the spoiler that helps the front reconcile with the rear. Some people may find similarities in body style between this and the Porsche Macan, but I have never confused one for the other. But Genesis has been criticized for imitating other luxury brands and picking up cues here and there, and the Genesis emblem is a good example of this. The ride is quiet. The suspension is not adjustable on any of the trim levels of the 2.5, but I find it to be firm but forgiving on California bad roads. Don't expect this SUV to be numb like a 70s Cadillac. It's more of a sporty ride without being too harsh despite the 21 inch wheels but if you're concerned with that you can always opt for the advanced package which gives you most of the amenities of the Sport Prestige but it comes with 19 inch wheels for a more comfortable ride while giving you two extra miles of highway miles per gallon. The wind noise is minimal but at the end of the day this front end has the shape of a brick so you will find and hear that wind resistance. The road noise is very low especially considering the massive tires. Let me talk briefly about fuel economy. It's not great, but it will return what's posted on the window sticker. It's ready for 26 miles on the highway, and I can attain that as long as I put it on echo and don't drive it like a ape. In fact, I've gotten as high as 27 miles per gallon of consistent highway driving. But again, I didn't buy this vehicle with gas savings in mind, and those huge 21-inch wheels and these massive 255 by 40 tires to remind people that Genesis did not have fuel economy in mind when they designed the GV70. In a future video, I'll talk about my favorite features in this vehicle in more detail. Now, let me go over the reasons why we opted for the GV70 and not the X3 or the GLC 300. I've had many BMWs in the past and as much as I love the way they drive, they haven't held up that well past initial warranty. And I like BMW, Mercedes just doesn't have the reputation 
for long-term reliability. If I were leasing a vehicle this time, I, I will probably have given the GLC 300 a second look, mainly because it was recently redesigned, maybe it was it last year, the year prior. So it's a very fresh design, but the X3 has started to look very outdated because it's been in the market for a few years already. And because of the way I feel about German brands is that I have opted for Lexus over the Germans, as in my opinion, it is the premium brand that has the best reliability, but Lexus just doesn't offer a real wheel car-based SUV, and this is why we almost purchased the RS 1050H. We just wanted to go back to Lexus. In fact, we also were interested in the Mazda, what is it, CX-90, but it was just too big for us, and I wish the CX-70 was out in the market already, and we, we would have checked that one out. And this is a very personal opinion. I feel that the RX 350 was more of a grown-up's choice and this was more of a visceral choice, but I know that when my wife checked out the GV70, she was blown away. I can tell that she loved it at first sight. I like, when it comes to value, the GV70% is the better deal. When compared to a GLC 300 equipped in a similar fashion, the GV70 was about $5,500 less. And please understand that I tried my best to find the same options, but in some ways, some of the options of the competition could be better or worse, just not identical. And then it came down to warranty, the longest in the segment. The bumper to bumper warranty of the GV70 is five years to 60,000 miles versus four years and 50,000 miles of the competition. Then we have the signature warranty of the Korean group, a limited 10 year powertrain warranty that covers things like the engine, the transmission, and the four wheel components of the four wheel drive system. Another very strong selling point that we consider is scheduled maintenance costs. Free maintenance for the first three years of 36,000 miles that amounts to about $1,000 if we would have gone with Lexus as they have one of the cheaper options in the premium market and it usually give you, they give you like one or two oil changes for free. At least that was my experience when we had the 2018 Lexus RX350 but when it comes to the GLC 300, they don't have free maintenance and usually scheduled maintenance is a cost with uh, Mercedes-Benz are way higher than Lexus. Speaking about servicing your vehicle, Genesis offers valet service to pick up your car from your home or place of work and drop it off after it has been serviced. We live within qualifying distance from the Genesis dealership and we will be using this option. And understand this is my personal experience and I feel that sometimes timing plays a big role when choosing one brand over another. In this case, I mean, we're living in current times where financing a vehicle is very expensive, so we have to talk about financing. We used Genesis in-house financing with a rate of 2.99% for 60 months, which was very low at the time of our purchase. Rates for new cars with excellent credit were about 6 to 7%. Lexus had a 2.99% rate on various electric levels of their extra 50, but only for four years and financing incentives were not available for the one we wanted. And I'm not trying to fool myself here. I know that whatever we save on buying this JV70 over a Lexus could be lost at the end of our ownership because I expect this Genesis to depreciate faster than a Lexus. So we bought it over German offerings because we plan on keeping it longer than four years and in this we could be saving money over long-term ownership costs. And we chose it over a Lexus RX 50 because we found it way more fun and cheaper to finance. Now let's hope that our first experience with the Genesis is a positive one as we took a gamble going with the unknown versus Lexus, the known and proven premium brand to us. In the future, I'll be documenting our experience with all aspects of owning a GV70 like the Genesis service experience. So for more on this vehicle, please consider subscribing below. But I want to hear from you. Do you have a Genesis, a GV70 in this case? What trim level did you choose? And what kind of ownership experience have you had? Are you considering getting a GV70 or a Genesis in general? And what car brand did you come from? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.